Welcome, I'll be reacting to Outlander, Season 2, Episode 5. This is not a market substitute. Please support the original. Silas claims he saw Alex attack Mary. His release will, will require a word from the lass herself. We have to help him, Jamie. You saw how he came to Mary's aid. He's not his brother. True. Can't the Duke vouch for him? He's already sent a dispatch to the Bastille, releasing Alex from his service. Is this why Jack comes back to save his brother? Well, unfortunately, the prince left with San Germain. Well, no good can come from that pairing. No. La Dame Blanche. Fergus said it's some sorceress nonsense. Once mentioned that that I was married to La Dame Blanche. <laughs> you did what? At Maison Elise. Who exactly Charles did you say it to? I was pushing yet more trollops into my lap. I wanted to stay true to you, but not appear unmanly. <gasps> Aye, and if we find them, they may lead us to Saint Germain. Heaven help him if he's responsible. Or at the very least, how about getting justice for Mary? Like, they need to be in the jail for what they did. Court. Le Disciple. Hmm. Aristocrats that prowl the streets in search of prey. Well, that one guy had the mark. Can you track that down? Go get some sleep, man. He blames himself for the attack because he didn't protect them, even though he was totally outnumbered. What is it? I failed you. You gave me your trust, your wife and your child unborn to guard. That wee English lassie. If you were outmanned, then you keep after him. Yeah. Claire. She's up, she's talking, she's writing. This is all a good sign. And he's insisting I leave Paris once I recover. He's kicking her out for being assaulted. That is so wrong. I was relieved to hear about Jamie and Murta being released. Maybe she can come and stay with Claire. Alex is a good man. With a kind heart. Mm -hmm. You, of course, know of my fondness for him. Once the infusion cools, then you can apply it with a cloth. Am I going to have a baby? I don't no. think so, no. They were stopped in time. I don't believe so. What would become of the lineage Mary and Jack Randall supposedly ensure? What becomes of Frank? Claire, if you leave that innocent young man who was just trying to protect the woman he loved in jail, to rot, I don't think I can forgive this character if she does that. Not okay. Dispose of the letter and allow fate to carry out its plan. Without the utmost certainty, it would ensure Frank's existence. What if I were to tell you we were about to come into possession of 10,000 pounds? Jamie, you should let it breathe a bit. Don't just pour it out. There's not even an aerator there. He wishes to buy a large shipment of Portuguese Madeira. And what does the Comte require? I've secured a bank loan to provide half the funds to buy the shipment. But once we sell the wine, we'll earn ourselves a rich profit. We will unite the clans, and I will lead you all to the gates of London. Because of wine. I love Jamie's face right now. He's just like... He'd make a great reactor. And I have arranged for you to be the one to sell the wine. I feel like he's going to plant, maybe not smallpox, but something like it on the ship. A glorious day. Next time, decant your wine. I cannot fully express. Oh, thank goodness. Oh, Claire, you had me scared for a minute. I'm sure it was. I can't believe you even thought about letting him rot Mary. there. However, I am concerned about your ability to find a new position in Paris. Now that the Duke has discharged you from his service. I fear traveling from city to city 
Well, it's not the future that Mary has envisioned for herself. I'm not happy with her current plan of manipulating him like this, using his own love against him. But at the same time, this is a far better plan than her original one of leaving him. While I disagree with this, I understand it. She will move on from this. Thank you for your candor, Madam Fraser. Alex and Mary clearly loved one another. They would have been great together. You always have a choice, Claire. You could have let them be. My memoir is on fire. Since you brought up my wife, let me make this clear. Someone tried to poison her and attacked her in the street. My memory is as long as yours. As pompous and horrible as the Count is, what if he wasn't responsible? What if it was the Duke of Sandringham? He's the other person who really doesn't like Claire. Hmm. Maybe San Germano will do us a wee favor and bring in another ship infected with smallpox. Hmm. Convince everyone the shipment's tainted and have it destroyed. Such a thing even possible? I've been waiting for a good time to surprise you with this. Apostle spoons. One for each of the 12 apostles. Mm -hmm. Christening gift. They were very popular until like 1650s or so. I'm aware of them, but I'm going to look up a little bit more background. This is a traditional christening gift. The most common fake is the conversion of an 18th century tablespoon. So look for the stem. It should not have marks on the stem. So we're looking at the stem right now. I'm not seeing any marks. That means he bought her actual apostle spoons, not fakes. These are cool though, look at these. Beautiful. Let's see what Edinburgh Silver Blog has to say. Ooh, wow, look at these. Those are ornate. The practice was for the child's godparents to gift the silver spoon at a christening. One spoon, not the whole set. Usually it was the saint who had the same name if they were named for one of those saints. Even though St. Paul isn't technically an original apostle, that because he's connected with London, that was a popular gift in England. It was very uncommon to see a full set being given. So this is huge, what Jamie just did. Normally it would be one spoon. One. He's going over the top with this. St. Jude, a halberd. St. Matthew, tax collector's bag. St. Philip, short Latin cross. St. Bartholomew, a flaying knife. Oh, right, I guess because of how he was martyred. Here, kid, here's a little spoon with a flaying knife. Happy birthday. St. Peter, keys to heaven. Jesus Christ would have the orb and cross, very rare spoon. St. John, a cup and a blessing. St. Simon, a saw and open book. St. James the Less, a fuller's half. And St. Andrew is another cross, which is now part of the Scottish flag. So I'd say he's the most Scottish in a way. So if Jamie had been giving a single spoon, it would probably have been St. Andrew. Okay, so that's probably St. Simon right there at the top. St. Thomas has a carpenter's square. St. Matthias, the double-headed axe. If you were to be given one of these spoons, which one would you prefer? Where did you get them? They've been passed down in my family for years. Oh, okay. That explains how he had a full set. After we arrived to tell her our good news and to ask for the spoons for our wee bairn. She said she was so full of excitement she could hardly keep the quill steady in her hand. I'll be any good at it, being a mother. Of course you will. Of course you will. What? I keep guessing the lines. That or Jamie and I think alike. Oh, a garden scene. I love the music this season also. I wanted to learn harpsichord when I was a little kid. I just thought it was so neat. I love her yellow gloves. Right, let's see what the food is. All right, lots of fruit. I keep it around as well because it's a fairly healthy snack as long as you don't eat too much of it. These two gowns are a perfect color combination. Vibrant, but not clashing. I consider it a picnic. 
He's an utter ass. Sorry to hear your opinion of the prince is such. Someone who's such a good judge of horse flesh is such a poor judge of men. The Duke is figuring it out. I'm a man who cherishes options. Don't you? I think the Duke is seeing an opportunity to recruit Jamie. That's what this is about. It has nothing to do with horses. I trust the Duke about as far as I can throw him, but at the same time, they do need allies. You've turned him into a man. Speaking of men, there's a rather dashing one over there staring at us. He seems quite taken with you. Oh, no. I knew he was coming, but... Oh, in the middle of a garden party. Claire. At least this is a safe place to meet. Relatively. If he sees you, he will cut your throat. That would be a lethal mistake. Drawing a sword in the presence of the king is punishable by death. A pity that your countrymen are usually too busy slaughtering each other to exchange such pleasantries. Ooh, I like the king's sass. At least in war, you know your enemies. Hmm, the king finds some truth in what you say. However, we hope your affection for carnage does not ultimately prove fatal for you. <laughs> or perhaps you have not met Lord Brock Turak. This is so awkward. I am in fact here on an errand of mercy to aid my brother. I have come here to ask his grace to reconsider his position. Perhaps you should beg on your knees. <laughs> to ask such a favor of a man like the Duke would not be possible. On your knees. Ooh, I like this king. <laughs> English are so literal. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie. You had the perfect out. Oh, they're planning when to meet for a duel. I challenged him to a duel, and he accepted. He said he owed me a death. Mm -hmm. Randall is locked away in the Bastille. On what charge? I swore an accusation against him, that he was the one who attacked Mary and me. I mean, he did attack you, just not in France. Clearly. Because dueling is outlawed in France. And if you're caught, you could spend the rest of your life behind bars or worse. I won't risk that. She just you doesn't get it. To become a father, you have to think of me and your child. No. He's like, but I've read The Three Musketeers. I know it's possible. It was written in 1844. <sighs> but Claire would have read it. I am getting a little tired, though, of the trope of women trying to talk the men out of dueling. We're seeing it here. We saw it in Bridgerton. Just once, can we have an understanding woman? Can you think of any time in a recent adaptation or TV show where they went to duel and the women were supportive? I do admire that she didn't come to Jamie and just try to talk him out of it. She actually took action. You can't kill Randall. There's no reason. Because of Frank. Then he won't exist and he must exist. She said, live until the child is born. But I think he's too upset to hear her right now. After that, I swear, I swear I will help you bleed him myself. <laughs> you owe me that much, James Fraser. I've saved your life. Claire's stubbornness wins again. I'm a man of honor. I pay my debts. So tell me now. Is that what you're asking of me? Yes. <gasps> He's never going to forget that she just did that, though. It was really courageous of her. Their relationship is back to square one again. Everything they built in the last few episodes. That was intense. I'm on Jamie's side with this one. He deserves closure, and it would have been a clean way to get there. Simple. But I also understand where Claire was coming from. 
not wanting to lose either of them because she loves Jamie and Frank. And she did what she thought was best and she did it well. That scene with the king, <laughs> I might have to just go back and rewatch it. Just putting Randall in his place like that in such a witty way, in such a French way. We haven't seen that much of the king, but so far he's been a real delight every time. And I'm interested to know what's going on with the Duke of Sandringham as well, because he has clearly changed sides and I think he has figured out that Jamie is not really on the prince's side. So it's going to be intriguing seeing what happens there. I'm also interested to know how Jack Randall is going to react to what happened because he might think Claire is just out for him or trying to protect Jamie and doesn't realize how much she just gave up to protect him. And hopefully he'll meet with his little brother who will explain that she just got him out of the Bastille. So I would love it if Jack figured out that Claire was weirdly enough on his side because that would just make this whole situation that much more complex. Things are ramping up in season two. <laughs> and that whole wine shipment deal, I'm now not entirely sure who was behind Claire's so-called poisoning. The Count might have actually thought it was beneath him. And he's a businessman. Maybe it's somebody else. I haven't ruled out the Duke yet. I think I mentioned I also just adore the music in this season. I have listened to season one's soundtrack in the car so many times and I'm gonna have to start putting on season two a bit. I know technically there's no spoilers in music but sometimes there are a little bit so I haven't wanted to listen to it just in case. Let me know in the comments if you are familiar with season two music. Is it safe to listen to? There's nothing in there that would be like, wait, what? I think this is definitely the moment where the story just goes That's what I feel like. Mayhem and awesomeness from now on this season. 